Okay, so a uh, quick short story, speaking of the those memes that we mentioned yesterday that I was not familiar with. Uh, one of the biggest personal uh, events in my experience it was about uh, a little bit more than 20 years ago. I was using a um, Java-based application, same technologies that they use today. Back then it was called Fusion and a SQL server in the background. And one morning I come back, to, I come into the office, I take a sip of my coffee, look at my screen, and there is an error on the screen that says, table users is not found, error in SQL server. And I'm like, in table users is not found. <laughs> I created a table a couple of years ago. It's been there for two years. So, uh, that was my first uh, and only experience uh, or encounter with the little bobby tables. I'm sure that everybody knows that meme uh, where with a SQL injection. Thank you, Felix, for the link. And apparently somebody uh, injected the SQL uh, drop table command into my code. Uh, which prompted me to build uh, my own WAF at the time. But um, looking at the logs, I, I was very fortunate because I had the logs, so I saw exactly what happened and how I can prevent it from happening again. And I had the current backup of the database, which was the more most important thing, so I was able to restore it. Uh, but that event definitely made me focus on security ever since. And everything I do is security first, performance second, and everything else comes after that. And with and finally that, correctness. <laughs> yes, I mean, does it need to be correct? Come in, come on. It's a, correctness is a part of perception, right? You can. <laughs> So anyway, in this session, we're going to talk about uh, handling security vulnerabilities and uh, more specifically how to report them and handle them in an open source environment where everything is open. And when, when there is a vulnerability discovered, we definitely want to make sure that we don't put a spotlight on it. And before uh, others were able to patch their systems, now everybody knows about it and attack. Um, so this is kind of an open dis discussion, I believe. Chris, uh, you you developed the format, I believe. So sure. In fact, I'll let if you. you if you want me to switch, I can I can run through the slides that basically I put together. <laughs> uh, sure, uh, you can do that. Share your screen. I'll stop my sharing yeah, mine. Or just a second to okay. find it. Did I even bother? Opening. If not, I can I can scroll. I'll try to match the pace to your. No, it's no talk. big deal. There we go. The funny thing, uh, while you're looking for that, is when sometimes people uh, contact the security group for Tomcat and they say, "Do you have a proof of concept? Can you show me how? I want to make sure that." <laughs> Yeah, give me the reproducer so that I can. Yeah, run it on my yes, own. you do, and no, you can't have it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but and that that's one of those balance judgments that we're we're always making when it when it comes to this sort of stuff. And the the, the problem we have there is if we make the reproducer available, then yes, people are able to test whether or not they're vulnerable. But it then also makes it incredibly easy for the for the script kiddies to automate the attack, and it's you can argue either way. Um, and the, so the, the 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 line we normally come down on is we will provide you all the information you need to work out whether you're vulnerable or not, without actually telling you how to execute the attack. Now that that can sometimes be a very fine line. Um, but for example, um, with the 
uh, let me get the right web page up so I get the list and the CV numbers right. With the remote code execution we had recently on um, the session store, we were able to we were able to say if all of these are true, then you have a problem. If they're not, you're fine. Without actually telling you how to, uh, okay, there are some broad hints in the list in the list of criteria on how to how to build the attack, but it it kind of that that's the balance we normally end up end up trying to strike. Yeah, you know, um, and no, it's not perfect, but it's never going to be perfect when we're essentially trying to do stuff in secret, but we have to do it in the open. Um, it's it, it's just the nature of the way we have to try and do things. And, I, and with, the, with, a, with an RCE like that, the, um, the as soon as you see Java serialization RCE, it's like, oh, okay, I go get the thing that packages my RCE as a as a Java serialized object, and then you have to put it in the right place. And that ends up being the hard part of the attack is, oh, I want to attack this, you know, I want to attack Facebook or something like that. Yeah. Facebook's never going to serial deserialize the data that you send to them. You'd have to have One like hopes. an insider attack to really pull that kind of thing off. <laughs> you give them way too much credit. <laughs> in opinion, but, uh... now, and, and, and then, of course, there's... Go ahead. No, no, no please. I was just going to mention that then there is the risk that if the patch is too clear, then anybody who looks at the source code, which is open and available, uh, can kind of backtrace it and say, oh, this is the patch. So any system that hasn't been patched yet, I can just try to do that. Mm -hmm. So we have I, a question I, here. Mahendran asks, uh, do we have a place where we can look at the security testing related test cases for open source projects? Um, we can really no. only speak about the Tomcat project, but we we don't have a hidden repository of security test cases. Um, that that's kind of the point of this whole thing, and and why I wanted to discuss this, because Tomcat and other ASF projects are all open source. We have a responsibility to our communities to do everything in an open way. So we're not really long term hiding anything. We might temporarily hide some things, but when we do a release, eventually we will tell you that it has a security fix in it. <laughs> yeah. We just might not tell you on the day of the release. No, we we normally leave it. Um, sometimes it's normally at least a couple of weeks. Um, that's because what what we tend to find based on experience is that if there's a nasty regression in the release, it will come out in the first two weeks after the after the release has been made. So what we don't want to do is make a release, say, hey, there's a, there's a really important security fix in it, have everybody upgrade to it, and then the next day find out there's a really nasty um, regression that breaks everything. Because then you're in a position, well, do I run the version of Tomcat where everything's broken, or do I run the version of Tomcat where everything's horribly insecure? Um, can I have a third option, please? Um, so that's why we leave it a couple of weeks um, and then, and to be perfectly honest, it's usually on my list of things to do to do the announcement, and I forget. Um, and it'll come; it'll be close to the next release. And I'm thinking, no, oh god, that's I haven't announced that security release. I better go and do that, and then I'll, then off I go and do it. Um, so, in terms of test cases, we tend to treat security fixes much like we treat everything else, um, where where there's where it's sensible possible appropriate to put a unit test in then we we will um it w unless it, putting the test in obviously flags it as a security issue you know we're not going to write a unit test that says test this piece of code for sql injection or test this piece of code for cross-site scripting that would be a you know that would obviously signal the vulnerability ahead of the release but there are certainly things like um Looking back at some of the HTTP request smuggling issues that were all around the URI not being parsed correctly, then that there are a whole bunch of tests testing the URI parsing practically to destruction. Um, so there, there are unit tests for that, but they are not in a specific, this was related to a security vulnerability. And to some extent, there, because Tomcat is a container and the nature of containers, 
is a large proportion of what Tomcat does has a security implication in one way or another, pretty much throughout the code base. There's there's always the opportunity to to get it wrong. Um, yes, some could be some you could say some tests are more security specific than others, but the way we tend to group tests is we group them in the packages that they're testing rather than by the the functionality that they're testing. So the URI parsing tests are actually split between the code that does the very low level uh, is this a hex digit isn't this a hex digit and the high level stuff that says is this a token isn't this a token and the even higher level stuff that says is this a valid uri or isn't this a valid uri um, because it, the, the tests are focused with the code that has the functionality uh next question would a closed source code repo for security testing help um, I have I have a view on that, but I'll let somebody else answer it to start with. Basically, we have uh, in Red Hat some uh, security tests for the CV, especially uh, we have a QA team that brought these things, and uh, that part of the business of Red Hat, uh, this is in a super closed repository. Uh, we even, in some cases, uh, find issue. Uh, we test them have a code to reproduce them, but of course we are not going to make these things public. Um, on the other hand, in a lot of cases, uh, I push my security, my uh, uh, QE guys just to look to the Tomcat code uh, where we have uh, our test suite. And in a lot of cases, this test suite uh, is testing uh, some of the security issue uh, in some way that you can't really use it outside uh, but it's validating that the, the patch uh, closed the security uh, making a reproducer uh, which will, will, would allow someone to crash a tomcat does not seem to be a good idea i don't want to see those things public right also i'd like to add that experience shows and many said it before me uh, obviously that open source software is usually much more secure than closed source software because when it's open source, you have so many eyes on it. And when there is an issue, somebody is bound to catch it. And when you have closed source software, like some operating systems, which I will not name, then only the hackers find those vulnerabilities. Only the people who really spend their whole day and night looking for those issues find them and nobody else knows about it. Yeah. So it, it's certainly I think easier with open source. And and we were chatting about this, yeah, the Java deserialization. And that's a general problem that if it's not handled correctly will lead to problems. And open source software is very easy to search for people doing Java deserialization and then checking whether or not it's been being done safely or not. Um, get back to the, just back to Chris's question about, it's quite too many questions, which is good actually, it's scrolling too quickly. Um, this, is, this is a good thing. Um, Bring them on. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we have the ability for, to create private repositories if we need them. Um, we haven't found that the, that it would be worth jumping through those particular hoops so far. Generally, the way um, the way we do things is that uh, the whoever's working on the fix will work on it on a local branch, and they'll post a patch to the security list. And the, the changes are usually small enough that a, a patch is the easiest way to get your head around it anyway. Um, OK, next question. As we install products which run in Tomcat, security experts are asking us to tighten the security by disabling this, removing that, setting this this way, etc. Why doesn't Tomcat do that by default? The short answer is that you can't please all of the people all of the time. Um, Tomcat has a very wide user base. You have people at one end who are using it for development and just want everything to work out of the box. And you've got people at the other end who are using it in mission critical systems and want it incredibly secure. What we aim to do is for Tomcat to be reasonably secure by default. Um, and from that point on, it depends very much on your level of paranoia, what things you particularly want to turn on, turn off, 
what you want to disable. Um, we could get into the whole security theater argument about passwords in configuration files, but that's probably a, a, a debate that would take the rest of the session and is perhaps best avoided at this point, and it's documented on the wiki anyway. Um, so what we're aiming at there is reasonably secure by default for the for a reasonable majority of use cases. And yes, we expect that people will have different risk assessments, different threat assessments, people will have different approaches. That's why we provide the um, security configuration guide that basically lists a whole bunch of things that if you're worried about security, these are the things you need to think about. Not necessarily things we say you should go through and change, but things you should think about in your environment and then make the decision that's appropriate for you. Yeah, and Felix just uh, posted the link to the guide in the chat. Perfect, thank you. Next question. Well, no, I just want to add a small, ahead, just going please. to add. I'm just adding a small thing. It's like, basically, uh, we, we tend to deliver a completely secure Tomcat to a customer. And the first try we, time we do that, they complain that nothing was working. So, <laughs> <laughs> because basically, if you, if, you, if you really want to have something completely secure, you remove all web app, you leave nothing. Uh, and then you have something very, very secure. And then you add on top of it your bar, your application. But... Uh, some customers were very happy because it was secure by default, but other customers were just complaining because basically there was nothing. Like you, you start Tomcat and you don't even have a root application, so basically you make a request, you get an empty uh, reply, uh, you just get some headers, and the people were saying, oh, it's completely broken now. Well, that they're lucky you even included a working connector. If, if you're being really paranoid, you wouldn't even have, have the connectors enabled. Yeah. Okay. Next question. Have we seen any security fixes posted to the code repo become zero day issues because hackers observe the changes and reverse engineer the issue? I don't remember any. John Frederick, I go, Chris. Uh no I'm I'm not aware of it. Not that way. Uh, but I, I do know that uh the the uh the file inclusion the ajp file inclusion thing was fun as soon as we fixed it uh and released it we hadn't made any statements about the security but on the user's mailing list there were dozens of posts what's going <laughs> on help me configure why do i need to do this and we were kind of saying oh it's to make things better for you and more and secure by default yeah right yeah privately, we're having we're having this discussion we're saying we should just announce this thing because they're going to figure it out like in a few minutes so <laughs> it was that was an interesting couple of days for us uh, of any other kind of zero day uh by us making a commit and people finding it that it was unsafe what I recall is some zero day uh, is basically people reporting uh, uh, the issue in public uh, on purpose, right. uh, basically to, to see how we were reacting probably. And that was quite unfriendly. Yeah, it, uh, that's not, not the word. My, if you want to get into the sort of the most unhelpful, um, the the National Security Coordination Center, which I won't, I won't be specific which one it was, um, who released the details of a Tomcat vulnerability against the embargo, then denied they did it, um, and then didn't apologize when I showed them the copy of the email they'd sent out that somebody else had sent me a copy of. Um, they, were, they were not and still are not our favorite people. Um, that was unhelpful to say the least. Um, so th those sorts of those sorts of things cause us problems. And then there are then there's at least one case where I've sent an email to the users list rather than the security list by mistake and exposed an issue. Um, fortunately, it, it was a minor one, and we just pushed the releases out within about an hour. Um, but yeah, that that was entirely down to me messing up. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's a question backing up a little bit to our discussion about the default configuration. Uh, Peter asks if we could ship um, like an alternative configuration that might be, you know, 
the high security default config or something like that, uh, whether that's worth yeah. doing. Really, it, it, it's a, the difficulty with that is against what specification for whose threat model with what can say it's that there's never going to be one one reasonable configuration for for everybody um, or yes you, you could you could certainly put together something that was more secure than what we ship at the moment but where do you draw the line how do you define what the uh, what you what you turn on and what you turn off um yeah how paranoid do you want to be a lot of those guides recommend that you disable a whole lot of things that frankly don't really provide any actual security like so yep. what you're advertising that you're using the coyote 1.1 connector right so you have a tomcat that was built in the last 20 years that gives you virtually no information about the servlet container running under the hood i'm um, glad you brought that up there are definitely um, on, some on, reasonable on. arguments for eliminating the error messages that say you're running 9.0.34, but that that even, other one is a red herring. Even on that, um, the, my counter argument to that goes as follows. Um, the whole, oh, we, we don't want to advertise which version of Tomcat we're running. So option one, you're running the latest version of Tomcat, or you're, you're running a version of Tomcat that um, you are happy that none of the known vulnerability, none of the known vulnerabilities in that version apply to your 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 install, because it's perfectly possible that there can be Tomcat vulnerabilities that don't apply to you. Or option two, you're running a version of Tomcat where you know there is a security vulnerability that you, that you are affected by. Do you a try and hide the fact by hiding the version number, and you are still vulnerable? Or do you be upgrade so you're not? And the first option is nothing more than security by obscurity. I don't think that's remotely defensible, which kind of removes the whole argument for, well, why do you want to hide the version number then? Because it shouldn't matter. Right. If, if, yeah, you're either secure or you're not. Yeah, these days, vulnerabilities end up being weaponized so quickly that somebody's going to check, somebody's going to perform an actual test against your product whether you're showing the version number or not, because yep. bothering to check the version number is not a prerequisite for whether or not you're going to be vulnerable. May as well just try the vulnerability and see if it, or try the exploit and see if it works. Yeah, I've, I've heard that from from lots of people. But, and you did, um, and you could argue, well, do, do, a different question is, does having the, the version number there provide any real use at all? Um, yeah, is it, is it a valuable piece of information putting the security aspect to one side um possibly for, i mean, it's a it's a useful reminder if you've forgotten that we oh, haven't upgraded that one yet maybe um but you really should know what versions of software you're running so you could argue that that, that version information doesn't all it actually adds is just o unnecessary overhead so it's a performance issue and I, i'd have much more um well, respect, I guess, is the word for, for a position that said having that there, it's an unnecessary performance burden. And I would say it's a security, than, than if somebody said it was a security issue but just on, on that particular header. I was uh, at a, oh. I was at a conference. It was, it was an Apache roadshow in, um, in Northern Virginia that was, that was supposed to be security focused. And I met a guy at the happy hour afterwards who spoke to me after I gave a, a security related presentation. And he said, um, what, how would you feel about working with me to develop a DISA STIG for a modern one for Tomcat? And I said, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And he didn't give me a card and I have no idea who he is. So if that person is watching this or in the session or something like, please reach out to me. Um, I will not write it, but I will help you write it in such a way that it's no longer stupid because most I, I, of those guides are stupid. I, I hate to disappoint you, but um, work got me to review the most recent one um, a few months ago. It's horrendous. Yeah, um, awful. It is just off the wall, doesn't understand how HTTP work. It's just awful. It's truly, truly awful. Um, yes, I don't... I, 
don't know whether you do, but if you ever review documents at work, you know, either uh, you know, somebody in your team writes whatever it is and you, you, know, you have to review it. If you've ever got, so you, you read the first two pages of a hundred page document, and you just hand the whole thing back because it's so bad. It's that bad. Um, so yes, if anybody wants to work on a, on a pr proper, better, accurate, then yes, definitely. Yeah. Please talk to the community because there was zero um, engagement with the Tomcat community when they wrote that. Yeah, the last um, one shows. I looked at, the last one I looked at, uh, it's it's a generic web application container stig, and it's not even specifically for Tomcat or for a particular version, which shows you you know how much they care about whatever it is. And it basically, they, they have references to products that are like ancient. And um, I think maybe the last time that document was updated, Tomcat 5.0 was the state of the art. So, and the only reason you know that it's Tomcat 5.0 is because they give you an example and they're like, this is how you do it. CD to Apache dash Tomcat dash 5.0.02 or something like that. And then change this one thing. And it's like, okay, so you guys are you know, 10 years behind, 15 years behind. Yeah, I do want to make one more uh, comment about, I, I agree with everything that was said about disclosing the version information and it doesn't protect you at all by hiding it if you have the vulnerability. But there are two types of attacks, right? There is some, there is an attack that targets your system specifically and somebody who would attack it specifically is bound more likely to find something because they'll put a lot of time and effort. Mm -hmm. And there are random attacks all over the internet where they just run headers, you know? And, and if somebody sees a header, some script finds a header on some random system that discloses a version that is unpatched, it makes you vul more vulnerable. So, I'm a minimalist by nature uh, when it comes to software. I think it's more secure to do. I, I believe in that all uh, qu um, one of my favorite quotes, which I never remember the author, is that a system is perfect when you cannot remove anything and not when you cannot add anything. And if you don't need to disclose it in the headers, I agree with Mark, you should know your, your version you're running. If you don't know, you have bigger problems than than that. So I would uh, not uh, disclose if I don't have to. I believe you're paraphrasing Michelangelo, who uh, said that his uh, his sculptures were done when he was uh, finished removing as much rock as he possibly could. Uh, there is a more modern quote, but maybe that was a paraphrasing of that original <laughs> one. So Standing on the shoulders of giants, as it were. Yeah. Right. Just, just going back to the stig thing, I went to look up my notes just for one example. Um, they, it recommends that you disable the HTTP trace method because that will prevent stack traces from being shown. Yeah, that is I, completely just, false. So, just in case anybody wasn't sure. Uh, yeah. It, yes. Um, awful. Anyway, right. So, somebody um, mentions just being in the session makes them afraid to click on the links. Um, actually, <laughs> somebody earlier today discovered that the Apache Con badge generator has a, a, uh, a cross-site scripting vulnerability in it. And we're, we're just going to go ahead and publicly disclose that right this second <laughs> and see what happens. I don't, we, we, we're not sure you can attack it, but if you can, I guess that's somebody else's problem. But stuff like, stuff like that happens all the time. And uh, and it's easy to do, right? It's a utility. It doesn't matter. Only trusted people are going to use it. And then suddenly you uh, you give a URL to uh, to five thousand people, and they start poking at it. Um, you might want to consider that not all of your uh, this is this is when considering your own application, of course. Um, just because your normal workflow does something in a certain way doesn't mean that some random attacker is going to follow that workflow. They can literally put anything on your doorstep and you will have to make sense of it. 
Uh, scanning through the chat, I think the next topic is uh, Docker containers. Um, so the uh, question is, what kind of security measures are we taking while choosing the base image? Comments? Uh, the Docker container is maintained by somebody else, right? That's not actually us? Yeah. Okay. Correct. Let's just get off the table right away. So yes. I don't think we can answer that, but we can yeah. speculate. Last time I looked at it, it was um, fairly standard Tomcat install um, with... It, it certainly wouldn't be something you'd want to use out of it. You would want to fine tune it to, to your environment. I mean, it was running as root. Now, whether you think that's an issue or not in a Docker container, that's uh, different people take different views on that. Um, I'll I'll just sit on the fence. Um, so we don't we don't produce container images as, as a project, and haven't really looked much at what other people are doing. So I think it's, it's really going to have to be a case of buyer beware for now. There is like basically it, it's so easy to build one. Uh, you just go in the Tomcat uh, directory where there's a stuffed stuff. At some point, there's some um, uh, correct uh, Docker uh, files. You can just use them. And definitively, the, the default there when you create the stuff, uh, it creates something which is kind of nothing. So basically, you have to add stuff. You have to add a, a conf file. You have to add a uh, server.xml. And uh, what you can do also is basically use the Graal stuff. Uh, you're going to that way uh, make sure that you only have what you need. Uh, if you really want to be secure, the, the only way is to build the things on your own. Because you, if you want to be secure, basically, you want to have only your application running. So you probably want to kind of um, have it compiled to make sure that no one else can be changing it. And then you're sure you're safe, but that's a kind of a big restriction. A lot of the reports we've seen recently, uh, whether they're legitimate or, or not, whether we consider them to be security vulnerabilities, often they're application vulnerabilities that are just sort of Tomcat's not give not protecting you against them, but it would be difficult to do that kind of thing. Um, a lot of those things can be mitigated by using um, sane file permissions. For example, if your application is uploading data to a um, to, to a folder or directory on your server, uh, the, the Tomcat process needs to be able to write to that. Okay, so that should be right, that should be application write available. But there's no particular reason why the running server should have to modify its own configuration directory, for example. Um, you don't need to write to server.xml under most circumstances. You don't need to be able to um, write to, uh, uh, other locations that are that are in Tomcat's purview. Um, I only found out recently that um, I think System D um, with uh, the Red Hat pack. The, let me start that again. The Red Hat packaging of Tomcat runs Tomcat under System D, and actually, once it run once it launches, it sticks it in a, a ch root jail so that even things like slash temp are not the real slash temp for the, the whole machine. And that kind of thing can really help um, uh, protect your application if you end up with an application vulnerability that then, then can be used to attack the container. Yeah, I'm really what, you, what you're worried about there is as soon as you start uploading, allowing users to upload files, you want to make absolutely sure there's no way that Tomcat's going to treat one of those files as a JSP and start processing it, because that will give you remote code execution. Um, or make absolutely sure there's no way Tomcat's going to try and deserialize it, because again, that will give you remote code execution. And generally, Tomcat won't. Um, Chris has mentioned a few things in terms of hardening and asked about sort of a recommendations document. I mean, 
what we've got is that security how to is that the one that went in the chat earlier yes and that's probably the closest we've got at the moment um it's probably not that far off but if anybody wants to take that and turn it into a more that 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 document more talks about well this you need to think about this option you need to think about this option it doesn't say well set this option to if somebody wanted to go through and create a, a, a document that was a you know, list of things you you can do to harden it then um you know the wiki is available ask us for right access to the wiki crack on that that would be a useful document for people to have Andrew's asked about question pots. What about, sorry, asked about honey pots. What about honey pots, Andrew? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, something, um, just because I've seen a few things people talking about showing stack traces and 500 errors. One of the things that newer versions of Tomcat does that's not widely known is you can specify static error pages, um, which Tomcat will then use for any error of that particular error code. And if you, or you can specify a single default one, and Tomcat will show that error page for anything. And as long as it's a, it's just essentially just a static HTML file, and that's what gets sent back. Um, so you've got more options with the um, error reporting valve to do that sort of thing than existed in older versions of Tomcat you no longer have to do the um, essentially provide a custom version of the valve if you want to do that sort of thing. Scrolling down. Just a bit of a organizational note. Uh, we have only two or three more minutes left in the session. Um, I would imagine all four of us are going to leave this session and just switch over to the Tomcat birds of a feather and that session will run indefinitely. This is the final session for the conference for the Apache Tomcat track. Um, thanks to everybody who has uh, joined us here and there or for the whole thing. And uh, if you'd like to continue to hang around with us, we'll be switching over to that track so that this one can stop. Chris, and, sorry, not the track, but the session. Yeah, you go. Chris, just before uh, we adjourn here, uh, do you want to maybe show the slide on how to report uh, security vulnerabilities? Yeah, I would like to that during yeah. the next two minutes or so. Um, yeah. uh, anyway, thanks very much for a great conference. So we can continue this discussion for another minute or so, and then we'll switch over to the other session. Thanks. Got to any of these? That's all right. We had plenty of things to talk about. We, yeah, we, we can talk about it in the uh, boff session if people are interested. Sure. So here's, I think this is really what we're looking for, right, Egal? The how, how to yeah. contact us yeah. properly. Exactly. So if you find something, we would very much appreciate it if you would send an email to security at tomcat.apache.org. Give us an explanation. If you have a proof of concept, fabulous, um, and. Don't just fire and forget that message. Please look for responses from us. And uh, if we determine that a disclosure embargo is appropriate, please respect that. Um, not everybody can upgrade on the day that we announce the release. So if you know that it's going into Tomcat 10.0.5, when that comes out, don't immediately publish it on your website and say, congratulations, me, I found this. Don't worry, you'll get your, uh, uh, you'll get your congratulations. Um, we need to give the we need to give everybody time to actually push that out to their production users. So I think that's about it for uh, for the time. Appreciate everyone's involvement, and as I said, feel free to hang out with us on the Tomcat Birds of a Feather starting in just a minute. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.